What's going on you guys and welcome back to the ARA show. So in today's video we're going to be doing another review on a credit card and this time in particular we are doing it on the M1 Finance credit card. We can't really do a full review just because the, all the details for this credit card aren't available to us yet. So far we just kind of got like an introductory and a quick promo video and a little bit about it so we don't really know the full rewards and the full details. What we do know is all going to be discussed in this video and if you guys want to see all that stay tuned and cue that intro so first thing that you got to know about the m1 finance credit card is you actually have to be involved in the m1 finance ecosystem if you're not involved inside of this ecosystem, you won't be able to reap any of the rewards because all the rewards in the cash bag go directly into your M1 Finance account. And if you don't know what M1 Finance is, it's basically just a platform you can use to invest into stocks and kind of diversify your overall portfolio. I definitely have a video, so I'll leave a link in the description or the top right so you guys can check it out and learn more about M1 Finance. But like I said before, it's gonna be kind of tricky to assess whether this card is worth it or not because we don't have all the details but you definitely need to have M1 Finance in order to assess and access all the rewards as well. So with that being said, let's take a look at some of the rewards and a little bit more about this credit card. So these are all the features that we know and all the benefits that we know about the M1 Finance credit card. The biggest thing here and the most enticing is that you can earn up to 10% cash back and that's something that we really haven't seen from a lot of other credit cards, but the key thing here is up to 10%. So if we take a look, you can see we can earn up to 10%, 5%, or 2.5% cash back on the purchases on some of the most popular brands. And I'll go into that in just a little bit. And then you can also get 1.5% standard cash back on everything else. So the way this card works is if you are invested into a certain stock inside of your M1 Finance portfolio and you own that stock, and let's just say that you buy it, you can get a certain amount of cash back on that. And let's just say that you make another purchase and you don't own this stock or it's not one of the rewards available, you're gonna get a standard 1.5% cash back on that. So that's basically how it works. You have to own the stock in order to get the full benefit. So it is a little bit tricky and we don't really know all the rewards and all the stocks that you need to own in order to get that full cash back i'll show you guys in just a second but that's kind of the tricky thing to know whether or not this credit card is going to be worth it or not so with that being said let's take a look at some of the companies that you can actually earn a cash back percentage on so some of the ones listed here are actually confirmed from the email they really haven't let us know 100 percent what they are and also i'll leave a link in the description for this article so you guys can check it out yourself but from what you can see we have the M1 Owners Rewards card over here, and then we can get 10% cash back on Netflix subscription. And to be honest, that's the only 10% cash back that after doing my research that I could find. So it looks like you're up to 10% is only Netflix. And of course, they'll probably be adding a lot more in the future, but these are the companies that they have right now. So then we've got 5% on Delta, 5% on Starbucks, which is awesome, 2.5% on Amazon and Target, and then they also included Spotify, AMC, DoorDash, and Nike. So we really don't know how much percentage back we're gonna get on these, but these are the ones that we know as of now. And like I said before, they probably will add a lot more in the future. M1 Finance is still a new and upcoming fintech company, so chances are they're just going to keep getting better and better throughout the future. So kind of just to reiterate how it works, you have to own these stocks inside of your M1 Finance portfolio. And if you don't, you're going to get the standard 1.5% cash back as well. So just to kind of show how it works, let's just say that you use your M1 Finance credit card to buy Netflix, you're going to get that 10% cash back. And then that cash will go directly inside of your M1 Finance account. From there, you can reinvest it or you can take it out and keep it for yourself, use it to buy something, whatever you want to do. So that's kind of how it works. And again, these are all the companies that you have to have in order to get the cash back reward. And another thing to quickly note is sometimes for all of these companies, they have their own credit card. For example, I know Amazon has their own, which will probably offer a better than 2.5% cash back anyways. So it's kind of tricky in the sense that you have to know which companies you are investing into and which companies you are planning to buy in the future. But like I said before, they're probably going to expand their amount of benefits and rewards that they're going to add in the future. So it kind of leaves some room for improvement just because they only have a limited amount and not everyone's going to be invested in every single one of these companies. Personally, I'm only in Netflix, Amazon Target, and Nike. So 
I'm only going to be getting cash back on those. So to me, it's kind of not worth it unless they expand the amount of benefits and companies that they have. So coming back to the benefits page right over here, we're going to take a look at some of the other benefits that they offer. So of course, you can reinvest your cash back. We've talked about the M1 Finance automation. So you can invest back into your companies or you can take it out and buy other things with it. There's also a contactless metal card, which makes it very easy for shopping. This is a card over here, which is pretty sleek. Nothing to complain about over here. I'm sure you can customize it as well. Because the M1 Finance debit card, you could customize that. So hopefully you can do the same with this M1 Finance credit card. And then another thing to think about is it's free with M1 Plus. So if you're an M1 Plus member, this card is going to be free annually. So you don't have to pay any additional fees. But if you are not and you're not in the M1 Finance ecosystem, that's where this card can get a little bit tricky. So you're going to either have to sign up for the M1 Finance Plus and pay $125 or you're going to have to pay $95 for this annual card. So if you're not within the M1 Finance ecosystem or you prefer not to go with the M1 Plus, this credit card is probably not the ways to go. Of course, you're going to have to find out where your break even is and kind of figure out whether this card is worth it or not. If you're going to be getting more than $95 in you know, cash back, that's probably going to be worth it. But if you're not, if you're not spending too much on this credit card or if you don't own any of those companies, then this card is probably not worth it for you. Of course, like I said before, it's a little bit tricky just because we don't know the full details yet. So that's kind of where you have to draw the line. So to kind of evaluate whether M1 Plus is worth it or not, we're going to take a look at some of the features. So we've got M1 Basic over here, and these are all the features you get for free when you sign up with M1 Finance. So I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to sign up. You also get $30 to $50 when you sign up and fund your account. So totally leave a link in the description, but less about that and more about the M1 Plus. So the coolest thing is you get your first year for free. So I'm also on that free year trial. And then after that, it's $125 per year. And these are just some of the additional features. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check it out for yourself. But you guys can see you get an additional trade window. You get smart transfers. You get a custodial account if you have any kids. You also get a 1.5% less on your bar rate. So you could potentially save some money and take off from this $125 per year. You also get 1% on your interest rate for the banking account that you have, which is really cool. So you have so much potential to save money and hopefully it'll be enough to kind of make up for the $125 per year. But who knows, you kind of have to figure that out and weigh that option for yourself. So less about that and more about the credit card. So the last two things they talk about is, first of all, more of your money in one place. So if you're involved inside the M1 Finance ecosystem, this could potentially work out for you. For example, for me, I have three accounts under M1 Finance. I have my growth portfolio, my dividend portfolio, and then my Roth IRA. So potentially it could be good for me because I'm inside of this ecosystem. I also have the spend account and I have plus. So it might be worth it to me, but for somebody that's brand new or just wants to use this as a basic investing account, it probably isn't worth it for you to get inside of their ecosystem. So you kind of have to figure that out for yourself. Another thing that they offer is they can help you freeze your card really easily with M1 Finance. On top of that, they have the Visa Signature Benefits as well as the Visa Zero Liability. So with that being said, that's pretty much all we know about the M1 Finance credit card as of now. You can still join the waitlist and hopefully you'll be able to get early access. And then from there, you can learn more about this credit card. To be honest, as of now, we don't have the full details. So it's kind of hard to assess whether it's going to be a great credit card or not. As it stands right now, in my personal opinion, I think that it's not the best credit card out there. It really sounds enticing with that 10% cash back or even 5% at certain places. But the limited amount of selection that they give you really makes it hard to justify that $95 per year. And if you're not in the M1 Finance ecosystem, $95 per year for an annual card that most likely will only get you 1.5% on some of your purchases probably is not going to cut it. If you are in the ecosystem or if you have M1 Finance Plus and you're planning to get that pretty much for the rest of your investing career, it probably is worth it. But you kind of have to draw the line and figure that out for yourself. So in my opinion, it's kind of a 50-50 if you're already inside of that ecosystem. Personally, I don't really see the full benefits yet. If they add more companies that I'll be able to invest into, then I might consider getting the credit card. But for now, I'm kind of in the middle. We'll have to see. So these are my thoughts and what's going on with the M1 Finance credit card. I'll definitely make a video in the future if I do end up getting it or if they announce any additional details. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys enjoyed this content. Let me know if you guys want me to do more credit card stuff. I did one on Coinbase on the debit card and that was pretty fun as well. So if you guys want to learn about that, 
definitely check that out. I'll leave a link in the description over here. But with that being said, if you guys got any value at all or you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. But definitely hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see more content from me. And with that being said, I appreciate you guys. And remember, guys, everybody eats.